click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we will discuss about one type of real-time CPU scheduling that is a rate monotonic scheduling. In this way, how we can implement this real-time CPU scheduling and what are the advantages and how to miss or attain a deadline using this algorithm. Rate monotonic CPU scheduling algorithm applies a priority based algorithm, a static priority with a preemption basis. Now, along with this priority and preemption basis, it also applies the priority according to their deadline requirements. If a lower priority process is running and a high priority process becomes available in the queue, then it will preempt the running process and give the CPU to the high priority process. Now in this way, priority basis algorithm is done. While a process enters the system, it is assigned a higher priority and a low priority depending on its period. The longer the period, the lower the priority, the shorter the period, the higher the priority. The possible idea is that the algorithm wants the processes to ask the CPU to execute consecutively that has a shorter CPU burst. Along with this the static priority, it also assumes that each processing time of the processor and the processes should be equal to the CPU burst time. That is, when a process is running, every time its processing time is equal to the CPU burst time, which is always equal. Now let us see an example how this scheduling is done. We must first ask the programmer that using this rate monotonic CPU scheduling, can it miss the deadline or can it finish the deadline? First, we have to calculate the CPU utilization, which is a ratio of burst to the processing period time. So we will calculate with this example. Suppose we have two processes with a period of P1 equals to 50 and processing time is say 20 millisecond and the process 2 of period equals to 100 and the processing time is 35 millisecond. So we will calculate the CPU utilization for both the cases. So together we see that 75% that is 0 0.40 plus 0 0.35 of the CPU time can be taken to execute these two processes and still leaves a 25% of CPU available for the next cycles. So we can allocate these processes to a rate monotonic CPU scheduling. Now we see that how you used to implement it to finish the deadline or it can miss the deadline. First, we are allocating the process P2 to start begin with its execution. P2 is beginning its execution as we know that the processing time of this P2 is 35 millisecond. So at 35 millisecond, it will finish its execution. At 35 millisecond, P1 will arrive. Next, P1 has a processing time of 20 millisecond. Thus, it will finish its execution in the 55 millisecond. But as we can see that the processing period of the P1 process is 50 millisecond. That is why it cannot finish its execution by the first time of its deadline. So it misses the deadline. So while assigning the highest priority to P2, for this example, we are missing the deadline and we cannot allocate or schedule these processes in this way. 
Now we will solve the example with the rate monotonic example. In rate monotonic scheduling, we know that the shorter period time is given the higher priority than the period which have a longer one. So here between P1 and P2, definitely P1 has shorter period time. That is why P1 will start execution. P1 is starting its execution and it has a processing time of 20 milliseconds, so it will complete its execution. Now P2 will arrive at the 20 millisecond time. Now the processing time of P2 is 35 millisecond and it should complete its execution by 20 plus 35 that is 55 millisecond. But as we know that P1 has the highest priority between them and its period is 50. So at the end of 50, it should again be allocated the CPU to P1. In this way, P1 has first its first deadline and again arrived at the next period. Now P2 is remaining with 5 millisecond of processing time. As the P1 having the higher priority, then P1 will execute again its processing time of 20 milliseconds. Now P2 will arrive at the 70 millisecond, completing its remaining execution of 5 millisecond. So at the end of 75 millisecond, P2 is completing its first deadline requirement, which is less than the P2 of 100 millisecond of period time. So in this way, P1 and P2 can be allocated and they are not missing their deadline too. So rate monotonic algorithm is considered optimal because if no the processes can be allocated using this algorithm, then no algorithm can execute in this way. But there are limitations of this rate monotonic algorithm too. The CPU utilization in this case is bounded and no resource algorithm can utilize maximum CPU resources at the fullest. Now, with N processes, the worst case scenario of maximizing the CPU utilization is this much resources it can utilize while having the rate monotonic scheduling algorithm. Now we will see an example that if it is possible for rate monotonic algorithm 2 for missing the deadline. Suppose we are having two processes of P1 with period 50 and processing time 25 and P2 with a period of 80 and processing time 35. We will again calculate the CPU utilization to see that the algorithm can allocate these processes or not. So together combinedly, it is taking a 94% of the CPU, thus leaving a 6% of CPU available time. So we can allocate the process. Now we have to see that it is missing the deadline using the rate monotonic algorithm or it is acquiring its deadline. So as we can see that P1 is having the shorter period time, so we will begin execution with a high priority process P1. First, it is executing with the P1 process. As it has a processing time of 25 milliseconds, so P1 will complete its execution first. Now, at the 25 millisecond, P2 will arrive. So it should finish its execution with the processing time of 35 to 60 milliseconds. That is 35 plus 25. 
but as we can see that P1 has a period of 50 and again it is a higher priority. So again at the end of 50 millisecond P1 will arrive. Thus leaving 10 millisecond of processing time remaining for P2. Again P1 will arrive and complete its execution of 25 millisecond. So it will finish by 75 millisecond. Now at 75 millisecond, P2 will arrive and try to finish its execution remaining time of 10 millisecond. Now, if he want to particularly execute the 10 millisecond, it should have finished by 85. But the period and the deadline of this process P2 is 80 millisecond. That is why it is missing its deadline. So that is the limitation of a rate monotonic algorithm that sometimes it cannot allocate all the processes depending on the priority of the period. With one process in the system, the CPU utilization is 100%. But when the number of process becomes infinite or very much, then the CPU utilization reduces to 69%. The example we have shown, we see that with two processes, it was sometimes 75%, sometimes 94%. Still, it cannot allocate the processes as because of the limitation of the rate monotonic algorithm. So in this way, rate monotonic algorithm should be restricted and sometimes it is useful as an optimal one for the real-time CPU scheduling. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.